सर्वे भवंतु सुगिना सर्वे सन्तु निरामया सर्वे भद्रा पश्यु माँ कश्चि दुख भाग भागे दुर्जन सज्जन भूया सज्जन शांति मापनुया शांत मुच्चित बंधेभ्यो मुक्त विमोचय मे ऑल बी हैप्पी मे ऑल बी फ्री फ्रॉम डिजीज मे ऑल रियलाइज व्हाट इज गुड मे नॉन बी सब्जेक्ट टू मिजरी मे दी विकेट बिकम वर्चुअस मे दी वर्चुअस अटेन ट्रांक्विलिटी मे दी ट्रांक्विल बी फ्री फ्रॉम बॉन्ड्स and may the freed make others free om shanti hi shanti hi shanti hi peace 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 be with all this morning our subject is <coughs> stories of vedanta monks part 5 as you know it is a series of lecture i started based on some vedanta monks who came to america and established various vedanta centers and how they went through struggle various kinds of ordeals and carried the message of vedanta and shri ramakrishna and swami ji monks vedanta monks <clears throat> it is very interesting to know their lives we can learn many many things from them but who is a genuine monk real monk sadhu in the bhagavatam there are 30 signs of a monk krishna told uddhava the signs of a genuine sadhu monk a sadhu is one who is kind never doing a bad turn to anyone for very fortified in truth <clears throat> pure in heart and perturbed in happiness and suffering and ever helpful to all to the best of his abilities he is free from lust and greed he has master of the senses he is pure possessionless unattached calm firm unselfish sparing eating dutiful and ever resigned to god a holy man is ever awake vigilant and self possessed he is courageous in all situations he is strong in body and mind he expects no respect from others but himself shows respect to all He is inherent. He has inherent stamina. He is friendly and kind to all. He has true learning also. Nowadays, it is very easy to dress like a sadhu, but it is extremely to become a sadhu and behave like a sadhu. that is the reason i our scripture says before you accept anybody as a guru check a few things first shutriyo that person must know what he is teaching he must know the inner meaning and the and the, and the other outer meaning of the scriptures obrigi no his character must be pure otherwise he cannot transmit his spiritual power third akama hato desireless 
he will not ask anything from you in exchange of his teaching. Akamato, kam means desire. Hat means he is tormented by desires, free from desires. He is a man of truth, full of love, compassion. These are the basic signs, according to Shankara. Christ also cautions his disciples: If you want to be a genuine, holy person, don't be a hypocrite. As Christ said, <laughs> "Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves." When you pray, do not be like hypocrites. They love to stand up and pray in the houses of worship and on the street corners, so that everyone will see them. When you pray. Go to your room, close the door, and pray to your heavenly Father. Religion is now a big business. Many people try to sell their merchandise through internet, through various kinds of media. Their goal: two things. Money, name, and fame. But a real holy person must be free from these three desires: lokishana, putrishana, bittishana. Upanishad says, desire for name and fame, desire for progeny, and desire for money. He must be free from these three. This morning, when I was reading Sri Ramakrishna's teachings. Let me see what Sri Ramakrishna says about the signs of holy person. First, he said, "His Bengal, his language is so beautiful. Jar, mon, pran, asma, ishvara, gato, heche, shei, shadu. The person's, his mind, life force, and the self." All move towards God. That person is a holy person. Second, kamini kanchan tagi. That person gave up the lust and gold, and he sees all women as the manifestation of the divine mother. Third, his mind always thinks about God, and he talks only about God. He is a holy person. What you eat, that you belch. If God is within you, you will talk only about God. Fifth, he says he sees God in every being, so he serves everybody. Sixth, he does not ask praise. He does not have any ego. Then he cautions his disciples. साधु के दिन देखी राते देखी तब साधु के विश्वास कर दी सी ए होली मैन एट डे टाइम एंड नाइट टाइम देन ट्रस्ट हिम डे टाइम ही मे प्रिटेन दैट ही इज ए ही मे ही इज ए ग्रेट मॉन्ग बट नाइट टाइम यू डू नॉट नो हिज पर्सनल लाइफ श्री रामकृष्ण वेन थ्रू दिस टेस्ट बाय हिज डिसाइपल्स यू विल फाइन सम साधु इज गिव मेडिसिन ही से झाँट फूक कर दे मंत्र एम्बुलेट सो दैट यू कैन फुलफिल सम ऑफ योर डिजायर सम टेक ड्रग्स टेक्स मनी एंड पुट विभूति एंड नाउ इज इट इज ए बिग फैड ऑफ टैक्टूज यू नो ऑल ओवर द बॉडी टैक्टूज गॉड्स नेम एंड ऑल द सिम्बल्स हरम पाए ही पुट से वुज एंड सैंडल And put a sign board and preach themselves. Do not trust them. That's what I'm going to say. A real sadhu, his inside, outside, same. No secrecy. 
very simple, very clear mind. No complication at all in Sadhu's mind. No attachment. Then he mentioned that you will see some sadhus with a putli, a big bundle of various kinds of things, a cloth bag, and he has a backpack, and all these things. Yes. <laughs> Do not trust that. So one of us sadhus, monks, used to make a joke. You know, Sri Ramakrishna says, those who have a bundle, don't trust them, but you can trust us. We have, we have leather suitcase. And... <laughs> Fancy bags, you know, so we are all right. <laughs> he used to make jokes. Sri Ramakrishna says, I cannot touch money, my hand bends. He says, our hand also bends, it goes to the pocket. <laughs> he, used to, he used to make jokes. <laughs> then he mentioned there are three kinds of monks, Uttam, Madham, and Adam. Uttam, great, those who are great monks, they do not move around. They observe ajagar vritti, like a python. Stays in one place, food comes to that python. So a real holy person sits in one place, people go and feed that person. He does not go for begging. But second class, they go for begging from door to door. They will ask, but the Narayana Hari, he will come to your door and you will repeat three times, Narayana Hari. He will repeat Lord's name. Then you open the door, you give some food to that monk. That is the traditional way the monks beg. So this middle class, they will go and food, beg food door to door. The Third grade, not only they will demand good food, and if you do not give, he will quarrel with you. <laughs> that is the third grade monks. <laughs> All is looking for some interest, comfort. That is the third grade monks. Use people for self-interest. How Sri Ramakrishna mentioned all these things, you know. <laughs> Next he says, Shadu Shanchai Korbena, Panchi Aur Dorbes. The bird and the holy person never saves anything. Whatever comes, as Jesus also said, whatever comes, let them accept. No saving. Then he finally said, you people should have the company of the holy. Do you know why? Because he is seeing him, you can see that in which direction he will go. He is a role model. He is walking on the path of God. So seeing him, you adjust your watch. Shadu ke dekhe ghodi mila bhi. Whether your clock is going right direction or wrong direction, but you should see a holy person in which direction he is moving. Follow his foot steps. Well, nowadays you have GPS. You follow the GPS. <laughs> they will take you to your destination. But I do not know whether <laughs> it will take you to God or not. But anyhow. <laughs> it is easy to dress uh, like a monk, but it is extremely difficult to be a monk, to be a sadhu, real sadhu. If you go to that real sadhu, your mind will automatically will go to a higher plane of consciousness. They create an atmosphere. When J. Grish was telling Sri Ramakrishna, Sir, when I am with you, my mind is so high. The moment I go home, my mind goes down. Could you tell me why? Because of holy company. I sometimes give an illustration. Very cold. If you go near the fireplace, 
blazing fire, you will get heat. You will get light. You will get happiness. And if you away from the fireplace, you will get cold. You will see darkness. You will be miserable. See, a holy person creates that blazing spiritual fire. The moment you come in contact with that person, you will feel it. Really, you will feel it. How? Sri Ramakrishna gave an example. You go near the ocean. You like it or don't like it. The soothing breeze of the ocean will soothe your body. You, you will feel great. But as you have seen, you know, this in the shopping mall, there are some places you will find the, some girls are selling perfumes. And if you go, they can spray a little perfume on your hand and you can smell so that you can buy the perfume. So you like it or don't like it. If you are near that perfume shop, that fragrance will penetrate into your nose. You cannot help it. You cannot stop it. That is the reason we need holy company. You like it or don't like it, his spiritual atmosphere will, will come and really will give you that kind of affliction. What am I doing? He's so happy and why am I so miserable? Anyhow, that is my introduction. Now, Today I shall talk to you about Swami Sarvagatananda. who was born in 1912 and died in 2009. <coughs> I remember one day I was talking to Swami Gambhira in Delhudmat in 1977. I was then in Hollywood. I said, Maharaj, we need some monks in the West with three paw. He was looking at me. Three paw? Yes. Povitra, Premik, Pondit. That monk should be pure. Povitra means pure. Premik means loving. And Pandit means scholarly. With these three qualifications will be good for a monk in the West. That I said. Those signs we find in Swami Sarvagatananda. He was really a very pure soul scholarly and loving. His love for the monks and the devotees are, are palpable. Whenever anybody was in trouble, he is the first person who will come and help you. Very broad-minded, open-minded, compassionate, forgiving. I first met him in 1971, before he, before I came to America. He was in Advaita Ashrama, had lunch with us. He was born in 1912 in Andhra, in South India. Then, at the age of 22, after finishing his college, he got involved in the freedom movement of India. He became a follower of Mahatma Gandhi. Then, in 1934, he was in Bombay. And he met Swami Akhanjananda, a direct disciple of Sri Ramakrishna. And he got initiation from him and expressed a desire to become a monk. Swami Akhanjananda said, you really want to be a monk? Yes, Swami. Very good. You walk from this 
बॉम्बे टू हरिद्वार फुच हिल ऑफ द हिमालय नियरली वन थाउजेंड माइल्स यू मस्ट गो बेयर फ्यूचर यू मस्ट नॉट कैरी एनी मानी ऑन दी वे बेग फ्रॉम जोर टू जोर ईच वॉक ईच वॉक इन दिस वे यू गो वन थाउजेंड माइल्स देन आई शैल सी दैट वे दैट यू वी वॉन्ट टू बी अ मॉन्क और नॉट फिज इज दैट He reached Kankal, Hardwar, and met Swami Kalyanananda, who was a disciple of Swami Vivekananda, and started a hospital there. He reached Kankal. I want to be a monk. Then Swami said, "You really want to be a monk?" I said, "Yes." He is coming from a very rich, respectable family. Then Swami said, "When you go to the temple, what do you do? You perform ritual worship. You offer food to the Lord, no ibedo, and you pray. These are the three things you do when you go to the temple. And in the hospital, you will have to do." Three things. First, sheba. You will have to serve. Service. Second, medicine and diet. There you get no bedo. Here you get these things. And third, there you pray. Here you say a few sweet words to the patients. Please watch. I really I wrote down in, in my diary when I heard these things. This is called practical Vedanta, which Swami Ji taught. Work and worship must be same. In the temple, puja, worship, and here in the hospital, seva, sadhvis. In the temple, you offer food to the Lord. Here, you give diet and medicine to the patients. In the temple. You pray, and here you say sweet, kind words to the patients. If you feel these two are the same, then come here and be a monk. And he became a monk. Then, within two years, Swami made him the in charge of the hospital. Young Brahmachari, you know. Sometimes I see some people are very mature, very dependable. Very responsible from the very beginning of their lives. Extremely dependable. You can count on that person. You know. Do you know what we are looking for? How we are? We are, husband wants a steady husband. Wife, wife wants a steady husband. We want a steady guru, not a crazy, <laughs> unpredictable guru. You know. There are some there. I can I can tell you. We want some people whom I can hold. I can I can I can trust. I can I can establish relationship. That is very very important. He was one of them. When he was a brahmachari, he started to learn Bengali and Sanskrit. And sometimes I wish to listen to his Bengali, and yes, sometimes I wish to enjoy his Bengali. It is, it is not perfect, but it is very sweet, <laughs> very, very beautiful and sweet, <laughs> but not correct. <laughs> I have a student in California. She. Worships Mother Kali. She repeats mantra in Sanskrit. She murders mantra. One, <laughs> one day I was listening to her puja. I tell him, "What are you doing? You are murdering the mantras." Then you teach me. I tell him, "My goodness! If I teach you, Ram Krishna will be mad at me. <laughs> Ram Krishna laughs at your murdered mantra, but I love to hear 
from the Western tongue, those imperfect mantras, who are you to correct? I do not like to hear your perfect mantra. I love that mantra which she is repeating with all love, with all devotion. That counts everything. <laughs> he was in Kankal Hardwar for nine years. Then he became an assistant and of Swami Ranganathanandaji in Karachi. Then India was partitioned. He told me, my goodness, how they left Karachi when the Raj began in 1947, after partition. Some Muslim friends saved these monks' lives. They sent them to the airport immediately and said, you go right now left everything. Our whole ashrama in, in Karachi was looted by the Muslims and destroyed. Swami Sarvagatananda, Mukhananda, Swami Bhaibhananda, and another Swami, and Swami Ranganathananda. Ranganathananda was not there, I think. Anyhow, they left Pakistan and came back to India. Then he became the head of the Visa Bhaisa, by Vishaka Patnam in Bhaisa in, in, in Andhra. Then in 1954, he came to America in Boston and became an assistant of Swami Akhilananda. And he, as I said, he died in 2009 at the age of 97. I visited him many times from when I was in Hollywood as well as from St. Louis. In summertime, he used to stay in Marshfield. Boston and Providence, these are the two centers. One is in Massachusetts, another in Rhode Island. In between, there is a place called Marshfield. It is on the coast of the Atlantic, near Hamrock Beach. That is a very beautiful summer cottage. I stayed there for some time. So Maharaj also in summer, two months, two and a half months, he used to live there. I remember first I went to Boston in 1972. I had a desire. I want to see Breezy Meadows, Anisquam, Thousand Island Park, the places where Shamiji lived and stayed. So he arranged my visit. I remember Miss Elizabeth Copeland. She was my chauffeur, very nice <coughs> lady. Very dignified. Her grandfather was a host of Swami Vivekananda. And she showed a diary in their birthday book what Swamiji wrote. Ballabhaisi tat kurjad jena mutro shuki bhavet. Do that thing when you're early age so that you will be happy in the elderly life. Do such good things in this life so that you'll be happy in the next life. So Swamiji wrote that thing. She showed me that original diary. And she drove me from Boston to Thousand Island Park, nearly eight, nine hours drive. Maharaj arranged everything. Then in 1976, Swami Prabhupada died. I again I went to Marshfield and the stage with Swami Pavitrananda and Sarvagatananda. Then Swami told me a story that what happened in 1962 when Swami Akhilananda died, whole thing was in mess. Swami's secretary, Mrs. Ushtar, her name was Annapurna, so when Swami died, she occupied the Boston Center and did not allow Swami Ranga, Swami Swami Sarbhagatananda to get in. Sarbhagatananda was in Providence. What to do? Then he wrote to me, it is good to, I am just telling a little history so that you know how the, the, he went through. So he wrote to Belunman, please send me a appointment letter that I am the head of both Boston and Providence because both centers belong to the Ramakrishna order. 
So Belmont passed a resolution and sent that letter to him. He took that letter. And Mr. Pileni, he's an Italian. He had a big grocery shop in Providence. He's a good, great devotee. So Mr. Pileni and Swami went to Boston Center with a locksmith. They opened the door and got in. Then that woman, Mrs. Wooster, called the police. Police came. Swami was then praying to Thakur. He told me. I said, Oh, Ramakrishna, you protect me. Police came. Then Swami talked to the police. This is my appointment letter. I am the owner of these both two centers. And this woman occupied this place and explained. And then he told me, luckily, that police was an Irish Catholic. And he had deep respect for the monks. And that police officer asked Mr. Pileni, is this man, Indian fellow, is he a genuine monk? Well, yes, yes, he is a genuine monk. Then immediately the police asked that lady, Mr. Wooster, you take your things and pack right now and get out from the house. That woman had to take her clothing. And the moment she came out from the house, Swami took that lock smith and changed the door, changed the lock of the door. That is the way he got occupancy of that Boston Center. He said, my goodness, brother, how difficult it is. <laughs> he generally, he gave his life for the order. From 1962 to 1998, he managed two centers. Morning he lectured in Boston, evening in Providence. And really, I tell you frankly, he is really something. The, not only that, he was the counselor in Harvard University as well as Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT. He used to counsel the students and give classes there. He was a instructor. And all the distinguished top people, you know, the professors, they used to respect him because he was very impartial, very outspoken, and always gave good advice to the to the to the group. He started Sanjay School. He said, This is my investment. One day these children will be a good devotee, would be good devotees. Then it used to, you know, if you live with these monks, they will tell you some stories. In 1978, 11th August, it is in my diary, in Marshfield, he told me a story of Swami Tarukeshwarananda, who was a disciple of Holy Mother. He was practicing austerity in Uttar, in Rishikesh. So early in the morning, he went out to answer the call of nature near the jungle. And I don't know, Rishikesh, the other side of the Ganges, there's a Gita Bhavan. So he used to live in Gita Bhavan and went to the outside in the arm. It's at that time it was dark. So one man, hunter, shot him, thinking that it was a, he was a deer. But when he went near him, he saw that he shot a monk. So he was so unhappy and very much embarrassed. He was trying to take his body to the hospital. No, 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 you run away. Otherwise, these people will murder you. So other people came later and found him in that condition. They took his body to Hardwar. Then police came and asked, tell me who did this thing. But I know that person, I know who did it, but I shall not tell you. I want to die. Thus, he died. He says, because Holy Mother, less teachings he practiced, do not see fault in others. He told me this story. 
Sometimes we used to meditate six to seven. He was very punctual about his japa and meditation. So I used to see they have a telephone, hanging telephone on the wall. He put the telephone down. I said, Maharaj, if you put the telephone down if somebody calls you, if there is any emergency, then he said, Brother, if I do not answer telephone for one hour, the world is, going, is not going to collapse. I shall not hold phone for an hour. And the devotees knew that nobody should call him between six to seven. Very strict about his spiritual disciplines. Morning also, I saw that was strict. That is the way, you know, we see these great monks. Well, I was taught by Swami Premeshananda Ji. Look, if you really want to be a good monk, work hard and go within. Don't try to get involved with the hustle bustle outside and politics and gossip. A monastic life, easy going life, and vain glory are great two obstacles. And don't see fault in others. Sometimes after dinner we used to talk. Do you know what is our real mantra? Tasmat tameva saranam mamadina bandhu. It is a hymn of Sri Ramakrishna by Swamiji. Tasmat, therefore, tvam, you, verily, eva, saranam, he dina bandhu. Oh, Lord of the lowly, that I take refuge in you. This is the way we have to surrender ourselves to Sri Ramakrishna. He had some, some very new, new ideas, some original ideas. He was very fond of me and he always encouraged me to write books. So he said, you know, brother, could you write a book? Lives and teachings of the great teachers of the world. That should be the title of the book. And do you know what should be in that book? No ism, no religion. Only Christ's life, Christ's teachings. Buddha's life, Buddha's teachings. Muhammad's life, Muhammad's teachings. Ramakrishna's life, Ramakrishna's teachings. No religion. No easy. <laughs> he was very, very... Because he had to face the students in MIT and Harvard. But let them know what these great teachers are and their teachings. Then let them decide what do they want to do. <laughs> then he told a story. In Harvard University, a professor of the divinity school asked the students, there is so much bloodshed in the name of religion. Could you tell us some solutions? He challenged the students. He asked the students. So one Muslim student got up and said, solution is very easy. What is the solution? Let all people be Muslims. <laughs> then there will be no problem. All are Muslims, no fight. Then the professor said, but what is happening among the Shias and Sunnis? You have also so many Muslim sects. Look what is going on in in the middle, in the midges. <laughs> so much fight among themselves. So you do not have any solution. So a Christian student got up and said, solution is very easy. Let all people be, be Christians. Well, no, that is not your solution either. Look at Ireland. They are Catholics and the Protestants, they are killing each other. So we have no solution either. So he used to tell us all these stories, you know, that how he sees the students in these big universities. He always presented to them the universal teachings of the Gita and the Upanishads. And he was very popular among the students and the professors. He was very humble and humorous. He wrote a small booklet called 
that is actually uh, this life story of Swami Kalyanananda, Swamiji's disciple who started that Kankal hospital. Do you know why Swami, he started that hospital? It was Swami Vivekananda's idea. But I see many monks die in the Himalayas without treatment. You go, serve them. So he bought some homeopathic medicine and made a small fast heart and there he used to teach the patients. One homeopathic book and one bag homeopathic medicine. That was the beginning of a big hospital. And he did not know any, any, any medical science. Just you tell the, your symptoms and he will compare with the books and they will give the medicine. <laughs> that is the way he, he, he is. He doesn't know anything about you. <laughs> Swami Bigyan Maharaj is the other opposite. You know? If anybody, one day in Kankal, there is no doctor. So Bigyan Maharaj, Swami, a disciple of Sri Ramakrishna, he became a doctor. He took his homeopathic medicine and when the patients will come and tell this, that what is the problem? Hey, bat mat karo. Hey, Dawai leke chala jau. Check the medicine and go. Don't you not have to tell me what is your symptom, symptoms. <laughs> so, <laughs> because he will give the medicine, Jai Ram Krishna. <laughs> some women came, they have some women's, you know, physical problem. Hey, Maiji, bat mat karo. Do not talk. I am giving you medicine, go. <laughs> and he be, be many people, and everybody was cured. So, so he can could not, he was getting more patients. <laughs> so do you know what happened? Then he brought one doctor from Banaras and <laughs> stopped his medicine practice. Bemari <laughs> hua, many bemari means I have this physical problem, disease. Hey, bat mat karo, don't talk. <laughs> We have all history. <laughs> so I told Maharaj, you wrote in that um, name of the book, you will be a Paramahamsa, great saint, to Kandananda. Uncle Maharaj, you wrote a story there that a bull entered the monastery at noontime. It is not the bull, it is an elephant. And I quoted that from where I got it. Swami Sharadeshananda said, it was in 1904, Swami Brahmananda was in Konkhal. There are two test huts. In one test hut, all the monks will sleep on the floor. And another test hut on the hospital. That homeopathic book <laughs> and some medicine. <laughs> and they will go to the places and bring these sick monks in that room and serve them. That is the way hospital started. Anyhow, so what happened, I tell him, one, the monks made a little vegetable garden. And the wild elephant entered and eating those whole vegetables. <laughs> and Swami Brahmananda, it was just after the lunch, they are taking rest and Brahmananda was watching. He told the monks, don't make any noise. Let the elephant eat. So elephant ate the whole place and cleared things, and then the elephant left. And if you who shout that elephant will de will destroy your cottage, it is fast bamboo, you know, it's just a shack. It will be destroyed. So for that reason, Maharaj asked them, don't make any sound. Otherwise, the elephant will destroy it. So, so I told him, Maharaj, it is elephant. Your brother, I heard that one. I can't believe Human beings are not afraid of bull, you know. We can chase the bull, but you cannot chase the elephant. <laughs> so I remember in 1980, during the Krishna festival, I was in Marshfield. I wanted to give a talk and a slideshow on Krishna. So I told the Swami Maharaj, I shall bring my carousel tray, all the slides tray, 
I need a carousel projector that I cannot carry from St. Louis. Oh, yes, brother, I shall, I, I, we will get it. So I went there and I asked Maharaj, where is my carousel projector? What do you say, brother? <laughs> carousel projector? Brother, I do not know all those things. Well, carousel and casserole both are same to me. <laughs> carousel and casserole both are same to me, brother. I do not know all those things. But I am calling Archie and Nina. They live in New Hampshire. They have all those machines they will bring to you. <laughs> they came and they brought the machine. I gave the slideshow. And I went to their home in 1987. I had a desire to see Camp Parsi, which is in New Hampshire, where Swami Vivekananda stayed and had Nirvikal for Samadhi. Mr. Francis Leggett's summer home. It's a beautiful place. So many trees, barches, and that's Lake Christine, four miles wide. And the water is so transparent. That part of the United States are really beautiful, especially in summer. Winter, very cold. Then Nina. Archie and Nina, their couple, their disciples of Swami Rita Jananda. So Nina, Eleanor, she got her master's degree in American history. And she wrote a book on Swamiji, The Gift Unopened. That is the name of the book. We have here for us for sale, very good book. She says, Swami, I got the master's degree, now I like to have my PhD. Hey, Nina, you want PhD? Come with me, I shall give you a PhD. Swami took him to the kitchen. Here I give you a PhD. Prepare Hindu dishes. <laughs> Prepare Hindu dishes, that is PhD. <laughs> so funny. Maharaj told me another very interesting story. There was a professor in Harvard University. He gave him a book on Ramakrishna, the Gospel of Ramakrishna. So the moment the professor read, Woman and Gold and Maya, he closed the book and returned the book to the Swami. This book is not for me. Maharaj said, do you know how to read that book? That book for all people. All teachings of that book is not for you. I am a Ramakrishna monk. All teachings of Ramakrishna are not for me. Some teachings are for the householders. Some people teachings for the monastics. If householder practices monastic teachings, he will be confused and vice versa. So he says, take the book back again and read. So this time the professor read the book and said, Swami, I think Ramakrishna is the answer to our society. I love this book very much. Our society is guided by two things, dollar king and sex queen. The teachings of Ramakrishna is a nice solution to those crucial problems. That he said. Wonderful book. Sometimes we used to hear many new things from the Swami. When Pope declined to see Mahatma Gandhi and asked him to, if you want to see me, you come with proper dress. You know, Gandhi's dress is above the knee, has a short cloth, bare body, and a stick in hand. That is Mahatma Gandhi. So Bernard Shaw made this remark. Not seeing the Pope, Gandhi did not lose anything. But not seeing Gandhi, the Pope has missed to see a man of truth and love. Sometimes he used to talk about Christianity. He has great respect about all religions. But he used to say, you know, the Christian people believe that Christ is the only begotten Son of God. Only in John's Gospel, that's sentences there, Christ talked in first person. 
কিন্তু তিনি এখান বিয়ারি বিলিভ ইন থার্ড পার্সেন অন্য সব ও ইন আদার গসপাল মার্ক ম্যাথিউ লুক দে আর ক্রাইস্ট টক ইন ফার্স্ট পার্সেন বাট ইন দি ইন দি বুক অফ জন হি টক ইন থার্ড পার্সেন গড সেন্ট হিজ বনলি বি গট অ্যান্ড সান দ্যাট ইজ ইন দি বুক অফ জন then he used to make a joke is god so weak that he cannot produce any more sun <laughs> powerless then he used to make a word that whole christianity is in the womb and in the tomb virgin birth and resurrection <laughs> then he told me a story that when caesar was the emperor of rome so they pushed a christian in front of a lion but the lion did not attack him but like, do you know any jugglery no did you hypnotize the lion no then why did you not lion to attack you because i do not do any harm to anybody do you know how to um, fight no then you are a coward no i am not a coward then you first fight with my soldier so there was a fight and the soldier was defeated then caesar said are these christians are very honest and very strong let us all become christians so all became christians the romans but <laughs> 300 arch bishops said wrote to pope we shall not follow eastern meditation yoga or may or zen we shall follow our contemplative prayer but jesus said shut the door go to the closet and pray jesus sometimes gave up the people you know to crowd and went in solitude and prayed meditation meji means measure we measure our minds during meditation that's a good sentence to me meji means measure so meditation what do you do you measure your mind during meditation then he told me the history of the mit that after the atom bomb you know in in, in japan during the second world war the scientists are very much concerned that we are going to destroy the whole human race we must teach religion side by side with the science but if only science it will take us to, to destruction so they built a chapel in mit it was opened in 19 oh, sorry on oh, 1945 it was after 1955 it became so swami used to go there from that time on as a lamp cannot survive without oil so a man cannot live without god so he used to tell me you know god is being consciousness and bliss that is aditya brahm he was a very loving monk sometimes he used to cook with so much chili you know from andhra you can understand <laughs> oof so hot so three days i endured then for the i said maraj i have a request will what before you put chili could you take a little food out from me then he became he said brother why did you not tell me earlier don't you know i was a gatekeeper of hell in my last life <laughs> <laughs> and heavy chili <laughs> will our song our order stands due to mutual love and respect don't react don't resent don't resist but reflect he always loved that gandhi ji that symbol see no evil speak not evil hear not evil the three monkeys you will see he put two fingers you know hear not evil see not evil speak not evil that symbol he liked he but all people are hypnotized by maya then you should repeat need bana shot come <coughs> in mit 
he gave a series of lectures and from 1997 98 he, he gave a series of lectures on the karma yoga bhakti yoga raja yoga our actions establish the law of karma which appears to be exact as you sow so you reap it is a biblical truth if you do good act you reap good result you will have to, he is speaking to the students don't quote the scriptures this is the this they understand reason all religions decline declare that god is love consciousness and wisdom of god exist but the love needs to be felt and the gita states that even the love which we have is not ours it is god's love what is god many think god is outside in the heaven it is not the case i shall give you a new definition of god g o d ground of our dwelling god is in all of us you have to learn to love all people it doesn't mean that you you deny your personal love everything is acceptable in raja yoga the whole process is inward not outward our success is a function of restraining our mind meditation helps us to gain depth it helps us to know things and evaluate the situation einstein said once we scientists too have to meditate our motto is to love and serve one day maharaj asked me could you do one thing for me there is brahma sutra yoga sutra so many sutras aphorisms of different religions so we should have ram krishna sutra so i can yes maharaj but i want exact sri ram krishna's words that you write for me so i wrote 46 words of ram krishna and made ram krishna sutra and sent to him i shall say a few to you then you will understand i, I shall not tell you all bengali words kamini kanchani maya lasting goal or maya that binds the soul truthfulness is the main austerity in this kali yuga shame hatred and fear are three obstacles to realize god the scripture god and the devotee all three are one all problems of life will be solved when your eye dies ego goes away ami jantra tumi jantri i am the instrument lord you are the operator as many faiths so many paths joto mat toto path take the non dual knowledge in your pocket and then do whatever you like be a devotee but don't be foolish pure mind pure intellect and pure atman are the same all jackals in the world howl in the same way that means all mystics speak the same god a real yogi he does not have any false step you achieve according to your faith don't look at human face look always look at the face face of god the person who is aware of his true nature he is a real man if you have real yearning then you will see god soon the essence of the gita is renounce the worldly mind is just like wet matchstick i told you the head and tail i whole thing you will leave the head and tail and take the essence which suit you god is both with form without form meditate in the corner of the house in the forest and in the mind naham naham tu hu tu not i not i thou thou dive deep and go forward 
Satchidananda alone is the guru. God alone is the main thing and other things are secondary. Tasmin tushti jagat tushtam. If God is pleased, everybody will be pleased. He has become everything, but greatest manifestation he will find in human beings. Sha, sha, sha. Forbear, forbear, forbear. He who forbears survives. He who does not perishes. Sin and mercury cannot be hidden. Let there be no theft in the chamber of your heart. That means don't be hypocrite. Do not limit God. Unite your mind and your speech. That is religion. I just give you some ideas what I wrote the Ramakrishna Sutra. My brother, in the very in the end, you will find so many people who will write volume after volume based on this Ramakrishna's pithy sayings. He was very happy getting those things. He was to tell brother. After eighty, everybody should have a pill in pocket. When you when disease sickness come, take this pill and just go. <laughs> but ashi te ashi ashi means go, and ashi means for eighty. So if you have eighty years old, you should be ready to go. <laughs> he used to make a joke about <laughs> me. He is the Swami lived in this country maximum years fifty five years, and served American people, loved people and served people. A great monk. Thank you. Um, asato ma sadgamaya. तमसो मा ज्योतिर्गमय मृत्युर्मा अमृतम गमय अबीरबीर्मयधि रुद्रजत दक्षिण मुखम तीन मम पाहि नित्यम ओम शांति 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 लीजस फ्रॉम द अनरियल टू द रियल लीजस फ्रॉम डार्कनेस टू लाइट लीजस फ्रॉम डेथ टू इमोर्टैलिटी लाइट अस थ्रू एंड थ्रू एंड गाइज अस एवर मोर विद द लविंग प्रेजेंस Peace, peace, peace be unto all.